story time is in honor of Juneteenth, which is a portmanteau, meaning a smushing together of two words, June and 19th because it was on this day back in 1865 that Union soldiers landed in Galveston, Texas to announce that the war is over and that the slaves were free. So that is why we celebrate June 19th or Juneteenth. So today's story is about Juneteenth. It's called All Different Now, Juneteenth, the First Day of Freedom. Now, this story, the author, or the person that wrote the words, had something else to say to us in addition to the story. So, Angela Johnson, the author of this book, writes, As a small child visiting my grandmother's home in Alabama, I used to gaze enraptured at a large sepia photograph under a curved glass frame of a woman in white sitting placidly in a chair with the tall, serious-looking man standing beside her. They were my grandmother's parents, and they had been born slaves. At first, my great-grandparents were just long-gone strangers who watched me through time. With every preceding visit, though, I warmed to them and could not wait to curl up on my grandmother's flowered settee and stare back at them for hours. They were a mystery, but tangible proof to my young eyes that all I'd learned about slavery in books was a reality in my own family. Despite knowing a bit of my family history, I'd never really thought of their moment of emancipation. For some, it did not come as early as it did for others. A number of states, including Texas, where my story is set, had not returned to the Union by January 1st, 1863, the date President Lincoln decreed the Emancipation Proclamation. So the slaves in those states didn't know that they had been declared free. It was not until 1865 that the proclamation was finally decreed in Galveston, Texas. Juneteenth, commemorated on June 19th, is the celebration of that event with Texas widely believed to be the first state to observe it. Today, more than 40 states recognize Juneteenth in some way. I'd love to know how my great-grandparents celebrated when they were told they were free. But that tale has been lost to time, so I can only hope that this one will do. Let's hear her story. All Different Now, Juneteenth, the First Day of Freedom by Angela Johnson and illustrated by E.B. Lewis. A June morning breeze off the port blew the smell of honeysuckle past the fields across the yard. And into our room to wake us. And nobody knew as we ate a little, talked a little, and headed to the fields as the sun was rising that soon it would be all different. Then we worked and worked and worked some more under the hot Texas sun until word spread from the port to town through the countryside and into the fields that a Union general had read from a balcony that we were all now and forever free and things would be all different now. I watched as my Aunt Laura sang as she held her baby. Mr. Jake, who some say was a hundred, cried quietly. And a group of grown people bowed their heads and whispered things to each other I could not hear. My mama held my hand softly and looked beyond as another breeze blew over 
and everything fell to a hush. But later, Papa, Mama, the aunts and uncles, and all of my cousins had an afternoon picnic by the water. My baby brother crawled around our blanket as we listened to the sounds of the waves. And as more people joined us, we ate as free people, laughed as free people, and told stories as free people on into the night. What was before would be no more. As we walked back home, the cool of the night soothed our tired feet that padded quietly past the shadowy fields of cotton. And in the morning, the smell of honeysuckle will wake me again beside my sisters and brother to a time that will be for all of us all different now. The end.